Okay, in this video I'm just going to do a derivative with the quotient and chain rule and then just uh, simplify it down. So we've got y equals the quantity x plus 3 to the fourth over the square root of x squared plus 5. So the first thing I would do is rewrite my square root as to the one-half power um, just because I'm going to use the chain rule. So remember the quotient rule says if you have a fraction it says you get the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom um, all over the bottom squared. Okay, So there's the good old quotient rule. And we're, we are just going to use that here. Okay, so, so it says you get the bottom, which is x squared plus 5 to the 1 half power. The derivative of the top, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So, um, excuse me, we'll have to use the chain rule. So the 4 comes out front. We leave the inside alone, take 1 away, that'll give us to the third power. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which would just be times 1. Okay, so again, this is just the derivative of the top. So if this is f, here's good old f prime, and the other one would be g. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then it says we have minus the top thing, which is x plus 3 to the fourth, uh, times the derivative of the bottom. So the 1 half will come out front. We'll get x squared plus 5 take 1 away, that will give us to the negative 1 half, and the derivative of the inside will be 2x. Okay, so I think I was able to cram it all in there. <coughs> so there is my function g, and there is g prime. <coughs> and then it says you take the bottom thing, okay, you're squaring a square root, um, so it's going to get rid of it. So again, we're just squaring the denominator. And now, usually, I'll try to do any simplifications that I can at this point. So um, the 4 times the 1, I would pull the 4 out front. OK, and then, so then I would have simply 4 times x squared plus 5 to the 1 half <coughs> times x plus 3 cubed. Notice over here, um, the 1 half and the 2 would just cancel out. So I'm going to rewrite it just to clean it up. So we have 4x squared plus 5, x plus 3 cubed. Why did I say cubed and write a 2? Um, and then I'm going to pull my x out front. We'll have x plus 3 to the fourth, and then x squared plus 5 to the negative 1 half. The denominator will just be x squared plus 5. Okay, so now at this point, I'm just going to factor things out, and let's factor out, I left off my one-half power, okay, so there it is. Um, let's factor things out. Notice we have an x squared plus 5 and an x squared plus 5, then we have an x plus 3 and an x plus 3, both in parentheses. Well, we can factor out the smaller of the two powers, so for the x squared plus 1, we can factor that out, excuse me, x squared plus 5. We can factor out the smaller power, which is going to be the negative 1 half. And then for the x plus 3 term, well, we can factor out the smaller power, which would be x plus 3 cubed. And then the inside, okay, we left the 4 alone, so it's going to go back inside. Now notice our powers don't agree on the x squared plus 5. So that means I'm going to have to multiply it by some power of x squared plus 5. Well, what would that power be? We need the, ex the exponents to add up to positive 1 half. Well, negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half, so we just need 4x squared plus 5. Um, and then we pulled out the correct power on the x plus 3. Go through the same argument for the other term. We didn't do anything with the minus x. It's still in there. We didn't pull out the correct power on the x plus 3. I think we're going to need an x plus 3 to the first power, but then we did pull out the correct power on the x squared plus 5 to the negative 1 half. Okay, so this is all over. Again, x squared plus 5. Now all I'm going to do is just simplify inside the brackets. I'm going to move this thing, the x squared plus 5, to the denominator. 
so let's uh go back upstairs and knock this off. Okay, so put my three. Okay, so we've got basically the x plus three. I'm gonna leave him in the upstairs. This x squared plus five. I'm gonna move it to the bottom make its exponent to the positive one-half. We've already got the x squared plus 5 down there. Um, inside the parentheses I'm going to distribute, so I'll have 4x squared plus 20 minus x squared minus 3x. <coughs> so we've got x plus 3 cubed. On the inside, 4x squared minus 3x, excuse me, minus x squared is 3x squared. Then I'm going to write my minus 3x, and then I'm going to write my plus 20. Oh, I sure hope this thing doesn't somehow factor down. Um, we'll multiply, again we'll add the exponents, so we can write the denominator as to the 3 halves power. And this is where they say in the book, we leave it to the reader as an exercise. I'm going to leave it to the viewer as an exercise as to whether or not this factors. We could even use the discriminants. What would it be? Negative b, so b squared minus 4 times a times c, right? So this would be the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. This would be the part underneath the square root. Um, for this polynomial, so b squared minus 4 times a times c, that's going to be a negative number, which means it's not going to factor any further, at least not with real numbers. So that would be simplified, and that would be the derivative. So, all right, I hope this video makes some sense and helps you out. Feel free to post questions and comments, um, and hopefully I didn't misspeak too much and leave exponents out too often in this one. So hopefully I caught all my, my little uh, misspeaks. So good luck out there.